saying that we need an interventionist state is dangerous. We need less of an interventionist state and more private sector uh, investment. And that can only come about through deep economic reform and convincing economic reform. Kasatu President Zingiso Losi has called for an active interventionist state in a recent op-ed for the Sunday Times. Journalist Jonathan katzen ellenbogen has written a response to this in the Daily Friend online newspaper. He joins us today. So Jonathan, what are some of your perspectives on the proposals outlined by Ms. Losi and her piece? Well, she says that free markets are the problem that South Africa faces, and it's why we have uh, uh, gross inequality, poverty, unemployment, and, uh, and all our economic ills. And um, I disagreed. And she wrote this ahead of the State of the Nation address, which is um, in a week's time. Uh, but what, what she neglects completely is that South Africa has not really had a free market um, uh, society um, in many, many years during apartheid, certainly wasn't a free market system. Um, I mean, controlling uh, people and labor and segregating people and setting up these vast state enterprises and controlling uh, key agricultural prices and supporting key agricultural prices is uh, and the, the state performing a uh, um, a very large role in absolutely everything is certainly not a free market society. And that has persisted since 1994. We don't have price controls anymore, uh, but what we do have is legal insistence that the states, uh, uh, the companies over a certain size um, are black empowered. Um, there is affirmative action. That's certainly not a uh, free market. The state-owned enterprises, the failing state-owned enterprises now, um, are a large segment of the um, economy, all government-owned. The government has um, uh, largely been counter-cyclical in its um, uh, uh, budgets for, for a very long time. In the Zuma era, they pursued counter-cyclical expansionary uh, budgets against uh, falling tax revenue and, and in a sinking economy with, after the uh, uh, global financial crisis and um, after the COVID crisis. This is, um, they have also pursued a highly counter-cyclical policy with this 500 billion investment package. Um, yes, they have cut back, the state has cut back on investment, but um, uh, for, for some time, it's um, em, empl employ state employment has been expanding. It now might be about to end with more prudent fiscal policies, uh, but um, it, it's unclear that it will. And in her piece, Ms. Losi says that uh, the state should put a halt to any retrenchments, particularly in the public sector. Uh, you disagree with her? Yeah, I, I, I saw that. And she said that that should be a part of a, a social compact. As you know, the government is very keen on these social compacts, uh, which they arrive at through NEDLAC. So big business, big labor and government arrive at these agreements and with uh, no parliamentary um, accountability on these at all as they're conducted um, with, without uh, parliamentary oversight or parliamentary approval. Parliament doesn't seem to be very important on these key deals. And uh, so she, she wants to deal on no, no private or public sector retrenchments. But, the, but you know, the, the first question is to ask, OK, uh, well, uh, what will Labour give in return? Are they pre uh, prepared to, in order for companies or indeed the state to employ the same number of people um, at, at the, uh, as, as, uh, at the to total budget amount, they might, might have to uh, cut back on pay? Would, um, would Labour be prepared to uh, uh, accede to that? And the answer would be no. What is their Labour prepared to give? Are they prepared to uh, change the centralised bargaining system, which is key to employing more people? Because at the moment, effectively, the centralised bargaining system means that the bargaining councils in various industries set the, in which big businesses and uh, labor agree, set wage rates. And these are then imposed on many smaller companies that simply can't afford these. And they can't afford to employ the number of people they might wish to. 
So Jonathan, Ms. Lossi seems to be correct in describing the current situation in South Africa, high unemployment, low growth, et cetera. But some of her prescriptions uh, and her suggestions seem to be off the mark. What is your perspective there? The real problem uh, is that we don't have sufficient private sector investment. Private sector investment yields to higher economic returns. So there's returns not just to shareholders, but for the entire economy. Then does uh, 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 state investment. State investment uh, projects are often poorly designed and uh, uh, poorly uh, managed. And you know, you look at, um, and I, 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 I would uh, argue that this is the case with um, state-owned enterprises as well. Look at the transnet uh, misallocation of resources with uh, the purchase of, of these uh, wrong locomotives. ESCOM taking ages uh, to commission uh, Madupi and Kusile, and uh, uh, only, a number, only a few units of these have, um, have, are, are now operating. You know, you just don't get the bang for the buck that you do with private sector investment. Key to growth is um, the investment rate of the economy, and our investment rate is very low. Uh, for, for the past uh, 30 years or so, our investment rate has been uh, averaged annually at 19% of GDP. China's, for example, is 45-46% of GDP. Uh, now, in South Africa, the problem is that st state investment is, uh, there's a very low return from investment by the state. The private sector investment has dropped. And in the Zuma years, um, uh, public sector investment rose. And we had, a, as a result of this, we had a fall in what is called total factor productivity. That is the combined productivity of both capital and labor. So it's, you, 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 don't, so you, you don't get more productivity if you just throw more labor at a problem. You might get more growth, but you don't get more um, uh, productivity. Um, so this combines both, and it's the magic potion of good management and a good use of resources. And it's low in South Africa compared to other emerging markets, and it's particularly low during um, uh, in a period in which state investment rose. So saying that we need an interventionist state is dangerous. We need less of an interventionist state and more private sector. Uh, investment. And that can only come about through deep economic reform and convincing economic reform and uh, changing the uh, South African investment story. Jonathan katzen Morgan, thank you very much for joining us on the CRA. Let's hand over to you, our audience. Do you think that South Africa has a free market economy or not? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Also, a quick notice, the CRA is looking for a new analyst to join our team. If you have an interest in politics, economics, and risk in South Africa, then do get in touch with us at info at cra-sa.com. We'd love to see your CV and also your writing samples. And ideally, we would like to see how you come across on video as well. So if you can include a 60 second clip where you analyze what you think are the major policy and political risks in South Africa, that would be ideal. My name is David Ansara, this is the CRA. Until next time, take care.